Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I'm excited to bring you a grow light unboxing, par test, and review of the brand new Mars Hydro SP3000. Grow light par testing is part of our grow light guide project. We're collaborating with Shane from MyGro to conduct unsponsored and unbiased grow light tests and reviews. Check out our grow light articles, our grow light calculator, and all the grow light par test reports from Cocoa for Cannabis and MyGro. Links are in the description. Today I'm testing the brand new Mars Hydro SP3000. I'm excited about this one. It seems like a nice light. It arrived from Mars in a plain brown box with no indication that it was a grow light. It's a pretty big box, almost four feet long. It looks good. It's well packed. It's a nice looking fixture. Let's see what we got in the box. Got the hanging kit. It's got hangers and pulleys. We'll play around with those in a second. Basically a phone cable. This is used to connect several fixtures to be able to control them all with one dimming box. Let's see, there's a user manual. The manual covers several fixtures though. It's not specific to the SP3000, but I got an advanced shipment, so the manuals may improve after the official product launch. Let's take out the styrofoam padding, and there it is. It's a good looking lamp, nice grill, with a large meanwhile driver mounted on the back. We'll lift it out of the box. It's a long bar shaped fixture. It's not too heavy, but it feels solid, well made. In addition to the driver, there's a dimming control box mounted on the top. Let's take a closer look. You know, the SP3000 is a big upgrade to the SP product line. It has top quality components with Samsung LM301B diodes and a meanwhile driver. The chassis is like other SP series models with aluminum fins as a heat sink and no fans or moving parts. There's a water resistant coating, which is great for high humidity grow tents or if you inadvertently spray your lights. It's dimmable and you can connect several fixtures using an ethernet cable which is included and then control them all with one master fixture. The meanwhile driver is mounted on the top of the fixture but it's removable and it provides six feet of cord to be able to put the drivers outside the tent. And it's long, it's 108 centimeters or 42.5 inches long. All right, let's get it set in the testing rig for our PAR test. It comes with a hanging kit and the first thing I'll do is hang up the ratchet pulleys. All of the SP series fixtures come with these hangers that hook onto the top plate on the heat sink. However, with this model, the Mars Hydro logo gets in the way. I resolved this by going in through the O in Hydro. Once you got the hangers installed, you just clip the pulleys to the hangers and we're hanging up. I plugged it into the power meter and now we just flip the switch on the dimmer and we have light. It's a nice bright white light. And the dimmer works. Let's take a look at the diodes. In addition to the Samsung diodes, the SP3000 features some OSRAM 660 nanometer chips that fill in the red spectrum. You know, all LED chips are more efficient when they're cold. As a result, we always warm up the fixtures for at least 30 minutes prior to testing. While we're waiting for the fixture, let's review the data on the Mars Hydro SP3000. All right, here we are on the Mars Hydro website on the product page for the SP3000. You can see that the current price is only $400 and you can use discount code CCFC to reduce that slightly and help to support our work. Power information is a little hard to find, but it is listed here in the title, 300 watts. The other data we need in order to estimate the fixture is the efficiency. We can find that buried in the description here. They are claiming 2.8 micromoles per watt. When manufacturers list efficiencies like that, you should assume that they're simply referring to the efficiency of the diodes used in the fixture. The actual fixture will have a lower efficiency. You can use our grow light calculator to estimate the actual fixture efficiency with these data. We'll go do that together in a second, and then we'll be able to compare with the actual PAR test data. But first, let's check out a couple of other things on their page. We'll click on some of these image thumbnails that they provide. Here, this talks about the chips and the spectrum. And in addition to the Samsung LM301Bs, they feature the Osram 660 nanometer chips, and you can see that big spike in the spectrum chart at 660. Here they talk about the heat sink and the radiator and how it's cooled. They mention the removable driver with the two meter, the six foot cord that you can place the driver outside the tent. You can see the waterproofing that I mentioned and other features about this light. If 
we scroll down the page a little bit, the next thing I want to point out is their recommended coverage area. They suggest that this fixture can cover a two foot by five foot flowering area. Two by five is sort of an awkward shape, but they're claiming 10 square feet of coverage, which is a lot for a 300 watt fixture for sure. We'll note that, but see what the calculator has to say. Down below, they offer some PAR maps. However, be aware of PAR maps that are made in grow tents. When you test lights in an empty tent with a reflective floor, the photons will bounce around until they eventually hit the sensor. Many grow light companies do this, but it's something to look out for. Testing grow lights with a reflective floor is juicing the numbers. It leads to an overcount of PPFD values by about 20%. Interestingly, Mars almost seems to admit that in this note, but you really have to read between the lines. You cannot trust PAR maps made in an empty grow tent, so we're going to make our own PAR map with a black, non-reflective floor that simulates a canopy. There's some other marketing information on the page, but we have what we need. Let's go see what the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator has to say about the Mars SP3000. Here we are at our Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. You can take manufacturer's data, like what we gathered from Mars Hydro, and use it to estimate what the fixture will actually produce in your grow space. So let's enter the data about the SP3000, and then we can compare the calculator estimates to the measured results of the PAR test. All right, we got 300 watts. The fixture cost $400. And then we have to enter PPF data. Our calculator allows you to enter manufacturer's data, sphere testing data, or field testing data. We got the data from the manufacturer, so we're going with calculated PPF, and we're going to put 2.8 into the micromoles per watt field. As soon as we enter the PPF data, the calculator populates the rest of the fields, and wow, I'm impressed. 616 micromoles, with a photon efficiency of over 2 at 2.05, and a cost efficiency of only 65 cents per micromole? Those are impressive numbers. Let's check the coverage. The calculator suggests this fixture can cover 9.5 square feet, which compares favorably to Mars' claim of 10 square feet. These are really impressive numbers. For a 300 watt fixture that costs just $400, you can harvest 16.5 ounces with one SP3000. It seems almost too good to be true, but I'm gonna test it to see if it does as well as the calculator expects. All right, let's add this data to our comparison chart. We'll go ahead and call it the Mars SP3000 Calculated. Our comparison chart is a way for you to be able to compare data from different fixtures. But in our case, we're going to use it to compare these calculated values with the measurements taken in our PAR test. The comparison table stores the most important data about a fixture, and you can add as many fixtures as you want to this table. All right, the fixture's warmed up, and I'm ready to do a PAR test. Now that we've run the numbers, we can confirm our test area size. According to our protocol, and based on form factor and an estimated usable PPF of 616, I'm going to test this fixture in a 4 by 2 foot area. It probably could cover more, and I'll do additional tests later. But to get good comparable data, we need to follow the protocol. If you have any questions about our protocol, it's published on our website as part of our Grow Light Guide and I encourage you to read it. So I got the SP3000 in the 4x2 test space, and now I'm just making sure it is centered and leveled. Once centered, I adjust the height based on the maximum PPFD. I want the highest PPFD reading to be just under 1000 micromoles. 999 is perfect. The sensor's right there in the center in the strongest spot. Let's measure the height. We got 50 centimeters, or 19 and a half inches. It's important to note that I have two levels on the back of the fixture during this process. Now that the fixture is properly hung, it's time to take our PPFD measurements and build our PAR map. The squares in our test area are 15 centimeters or six inches square. I take a PPFD measurement from the center of each square. PPFD measures the density of photons striking the sensor. And by taking readings across the grid, we can measure the average density of photons. When we multiply that by the test area size, we get the number of photons that strike the canopy, the usable PPF. And I gotta say, wow, 
The PPFD readings that I'm recording for the SP3000 are impressive. Let's look at the PAR map that this test created. This is a crazy good PAR map. It's so good that it's boring. Our maps are designed to show the density of light, but with the SP3000, it just looks the same everywhere, which is amazing. My PAR maps never have PPFD values that exceed 1000. As we saw, the highest PPFD in the test area was 999, and the lowest reading on this map is the upper right corner with 734. 734 micromoles is a great PPFD. Most fixtures struggle to keep their corner readings above 500. The SP3000 keeps them all above 700, and the corners are the only squares below 800. This is the best 2x4 PAR map that I have ever seen. Let's run the numbers. First, we need to take the average PPFD. Across this PAR map, the average is 875.5 micromoles. We have to multiply that by our test area, which is 0.72 square meters. 875.5 times 0.72 gives us a usable PPF of 630.3. During the test, I measured a power draw of 297 watts. I can already tell that these are great numbers, but let's take them to the grow light calculator. All right, we're back on the Cocoa for Cannabis grow light calculator. And now we're gonna enter the field measured data about the SP3000 from my PAR test. It drew 297 watts, and we know that it costs $400. We need to select usable PPF because the data is from our field test. And the usable PPF that I measured was 630.3 micromoles. Wow, this is even a little better than we predicted. With 630.3 micromoles, Using 297 watts, the SP3000 has a photon efficiency of 2.12. At only $400, it costs just 63 cents per micromole. That is outstanding. In fact, it's unheard of. I have not heard of a fixture getting that photon efficiency at that price point. Truly impressive. Looking at the coverage, you can see that based on the test data, this fixture should be able to cover 9.7 square feet and the benchmark harvest potential is 473 grams, almost 17 ounces. Needless to say, I'm impressed. Let's add this data to the comparison chart. I'll call this the Mars SP3000 measured, and we'll see how the measured results compared to the calculator's estimates. You know, we estimated the usable PPF at 616 micromoles, and I thought that was impressive. We measured a usable PPF of 630.3. The SP3000 actually beat the calculator's estimates, but the calculator was off by only 2.3%. Now when you come to the grow light calculator, you will not have to enter data about the Mars SP3000 because I've loaded the test data in our preloaded fixtures. You can see all the test data there, and you can link through to our test report page. For each fixture that we test, we generate these test report pages. This video will appear at the top, followed by the key stats from the PAR test. You can enter the price here to see the cost efficiency, and you can see all the most important data about the light. Scrolling down the page, you can see the PAR test data, and you can open and review the PAR map. You know, as soon as I took my first PPFD reading in the corner of the test area, I was sold on this light. The PAR map is impressive. The efficiency is superior, and the price is a bargain. I have not seen a better 300 watt fixture for a 4x2 grow space. Not just at this price, at any price. For a 4x4 space, we recommend two of them. Two of these in a 4x4 tent would be amazing. The SP3000 probably can easily cover a larger space than 4x2. I have two of them, and I'm going to run some additional tests in alternative areas, both individually and together. Look forward to seeing how the two of them do together in a 4x4 and in a 5x5 grow space. I give the SP3000 my highest recommendation. It is an awesome fixture, and I'm sure that any grower will love it. Below my review, you'll find our shopping links. Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Testing is unsponsored and unbiased. We do not get paid for testing lights but we do earn commissions when you make purchases through our links or use our discount codes. Remember, CCFC. Our goal is to provide reliable, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. And you can support our work simply by following our links when you purchase a grow light. 
I'd like to thank Sean at Mars Hydro for sending me the light to test. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in grow light testing, you should also be sure to subscribe to the MyGrow YouTube channel. And follow me on Instagram at Dr. MJ Coco. I hope you come to visit us at CocoForCannabis.com. We are dedicated to the science and practice of growing cannabis. You can chat with our community, browse grow light test reports, and try your hand at our grow light calculator. There are more test reports coming soon. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending grower love to everyone.